you've ever been without power and you're looking for an easy way to fix that, let us show you how we do that with solar power. It always happens when you least expect it. Storm rolls in, flashes of lightning, and suddenly no lights or electricity. Let's show you how solar power can save the day. All right, so you've gotten interested in solar power, but you don't know where to start. We're going to show kind of our adventure through this. We got interested in it, didn't really know where to start, watched a bunch of videos on YouTube, read a bunch of articles, and we're going to show off our beginner solar setup. It's perfect for powering a little shed, uh, doing some little odds and ends stuff. It gives us a way in case we lose power. We're in an area that has a lot of tornadoes come through. They take out the power lines. Now we have a backup way to charge our cell phones, charge some flashlights and different odds and ends uh, and not lose power completely. All right, so the first part of this is obviously the panel. Now this is a Renogy 100 watt panel. Uh, it's pretty small, super easy to mount. It's got four screws that secure it into the roof. As we kind of pan over, I will show you that. Um, it's got little brackets and then these four little screws that go into the roof right there. Uh, took about five minutes to throw up here on, on the shed roof. It's got two plugs on the back of the panel that you have two of your wires run down and connect to. Uh, they hook them on before you mount the panel. Just there's a little gap under the panel here. You can see my hands kind of fit in between it. That's so that these wires can run down and go to your solar charger. All right, so these two wires, they come off the back of the solar panel. We've got them run down, secured here into the wall, and then running straight over into the solar charger. From there, it will make its way down to the battery. So all of this was part of a kit we got on a Black Friday sale from Renogy. Uh, we have replaced to a newer model charge controller from them. Uh, so this is the newer Wanderer 30 amp. It's a PWM charger. It was just an update uh, that they now have in the kit. But when we bought the kit, it was the older model. So we just updated this. As you can see, your two wires from the solar panel run into here. It's just a blade type connector. You tighten in the screws here. It's got a positive and a negative. Uh, just like all 12 volt equipment does and then from there you have two wires that run down to the battery Positive negative. It's got two screws to secure these wires in so moving on from the charge controller We get down to the batteries now. You can see two batteries here When we first did this We didn't know a lot about solar power we We're trying to do it as cheap as possible just to get some power to the shed without having to run lines so we went to Royal King, got a marine deep cycle battery here, uh, had it hooked up. It lasted about eight or nine months and then just died on us. So we went and we upgraded to a Life PO4 battery. It is a power queen. Um, it's a 100 amp hour battery, so it gives us plenty of, of storage for our power needs. Uh, so if we have like a week of cloudiness, whatever the case may be, we will have some power stored enough to come in, turn on lights in the shed, you know, do whatever we need to there. So as you can see, we've got the two black wires, a positive and a negative running down from the charge controller. And then we have a red and black, I think it's like a two gauge wire that we drilled into the wall here so we could run it into an inverter which we then have plugged into our switches and all the power plugs inside. Uh, so super simple to get power from your outside into the interior of your building, whatever you're trying to do. Uh, it took us about 30 minutes to do all of this, get everything wired up and have power inside. A little tip on some battery safety issues here. Make sure you keep them in a well-ventilated area. Uh, and try to keep them in an area that doesn't see extreme heat or cold. That's bad for the batteries. 
it gets about 100 to 120 inside the shed. There's no air conditioning unless we open up a window, get some ventilation going. So we keep it here on this little covered front porch. Uh, it's well ventilated. You can see we've got it up off of the, the deck floor a little bit with some metal grating and stuff to give it a little shade. We kind of put some cloth around it, some wood, you know, whatever you've got to give it some more shade. It's got good airflow, well ventilated. Uh, the one thing you do not want to have happen is have a battery fire. It's bad news for everybody. So typically we will do something along these lines just to kind of add in some shade and make sure that it's covered and not direct sun beating down onto it. All right, so if you found this interesting or an informative so far, go ahead and do us a favor and hit that like and subscribe button. It helps us out, allows us to keep making videos and passing on information and knowledge. From the battery, we have these two, this red and black wire running in. They come in and they connect to this 1500 watt inverter we have set here. We've got it mounted right here because the electrical for the shed is all right here. So we just mounted this on the interior wall uh, and then have it tied into some light switches and plugs to give power to the whole shed. Uh, it's super simple. You flip a switch back here when it's all hooked up. You hit the button and then I will turn a switch on and now we have power. And if I was to turn the inverter off, we lose power. I'll turn the switch back off. Uh, you can kind of see this. I'll go through some of the screens here on the inverter just so you can see um, some different things that shows. So you'll see right now we're drawing zero watts. Uh, we've got 14.3 volts. And then as I turn on the switch to give some power, you will notice we're now pulling 36 watts. Kind of bumps up to 50 on the initial surge and then settles in there at 36. We're using um, LED bulbs in here just to draw less power. You can see, now we've got the inverter on. I flipped the switch and now we have lights. Uh, we'll pan around so you can see the lights here in the shed. So, now that we have the inverter on, I'm gonna flip the light switch. And there we go. As I turn it off, I will turn it I will turn the inverter off real quick, just so you can see. I turn the light switch on, no lights, off. So I turn the inverter back on. There we go. Now, in addition to this, we can do a few things. We can hook up some tool chargers, different little stuff as we need them. Uh, it's just a quick, simple way to get something that's not right there at your house, power uh, without having to run a bunch of lines have an electrician come out, all that sort of stuff. So we're like a lot of people out there. Uh, we kind of rely on ourselves if situations get bad. So we always try to have backups for everything. That way we don't have to ask others for help. So if you're into kind of the self-reliance or looking for ways to do it, make sure you kind of like and subscribe to our channel and follow our journey.